Hello everyone, my name is Matt Workoski and welcome to a tutorial on how to make Five Nights at Freddy's or a Five Nights at Freddy's game on Click Team Fusion. Now, I decided to do something a little bit different for my uh, channel because uh, I knew that there were some people out there that, you know, wanted to make a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game and I'm sure that there are some who wanted to do it on Click Team, which was the same engine used for uh, the original games. Now, I just wanted to point out a couple things. First of all, um, there are going to be two different variations of this video. First is the one you're watching right now. This is going to be a more down-to-earth kind of simple tutorial. Um, this is more so for people who are just getting into Click Team and don't exactly know much about it. Uh, so, along with, you know, making the game, I'll also be showing them, uh, how it works, uh, some of the stuff that they can do, and just all of that. And then, um, there's gonna be the second video, which I will, I won't make right away, but I will eventually put it up, um, in the info cards in this video. Uh, those will be for people who already know how Click Team works, I already know, like, some of the more complex stuff, and just want to get into the base like thing of how to make it and uh this is gonna be more like a slow version uh i'll kind of be taking some pauses here and there that version will have no pauses it'll get straight to it those are more for people who have more experience with it and um second thing is um i'm using the full version of click team fusion i'm not using the developer's version mind you i'm using the fully bought version of click team uh you can use the free version if you want but just know that there are some limitations to some of the things you can do like for example um you will have um much more uh restrictions to the stuff you can add especially in the frame editor um i'm not sure if you're not if you won't be able to you know uh export games either i haven't i haven't really tried that for the free version but um yeah, pretty much. And then, um, well, I, th I think that's it. Um, so yeah, we'll pretty much just get right into it. I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. And again, I'll be just kind of showing you guys how Click Team works in general. So, first things first, you want to go to File, click on New. That'll make a new, a new application, obviously. Now, you'll be met with this screen right here once you do that. This, so... The nice thing about Click Team Fusion is that it's composed of three different parts. Now this part right here is called the Storyboard Editor. Now, this is basically all the different segments of the games combined. It's kind of like a movie, you know, you combine all the different um, scenes and put it all so that way it makes an actual movie. That's pretty much what we're doing here. So, um, and you can do some settings and stuff, you can change some settings here as well and we're actually gonna do some of that stuff uh but before we do that we first off want to rename our application we obviously don't want to name it as application one that's boring instead we want to right click click on rename or f2 as it says and then i'll just name this five nights whoops <laughs> five nights at freddy's tutorial and obviously you can do you know, have your name as whatever you want, whatever your fan game is going to be. Obviously, you don't have to do exactly as I say there, but you get the idea. Um, next things first. Uh, if Now, you notice that if you clicked on here, that this little properties bar showed up. This is good because this is pretty much where all of our settings for a lot of our like objects and stuff is going to be. Now, let, we're going to click on this second uh, image here called window uh, and we're going to be changing um, I think just one thing here now little, we're just going to be changing the aspect ratio now first of all you may have noticed that the aspect ratio is 640 by 480 which is obviously it's it's way too small we're obviously not gonna you know have it like that uh, not really very useful instead we want to change this aspect ratio because that, cause that's really small. Like you obviously don't want your game to be 640 by 480 unless, by unless it's different. But usually we want to increase this. So, uh, 
I'm, gonna, I'm pretty much going to be remaking uh, Five Nights at Freddy's here. Obviously, you're not going to be doing that, but that's just what I'm going to be doing because I already have all the assets and stuff. And the original aspect ratio for that game was 1280 by 720. So I'll be typing those inputs right here, 1280 by 720. Okay, and then once you do that, this little pop-up will appear. And it's pretty much asking you, um, do you want to change the the aspect ratio of all the frames that are implemented as well as all the ones that are going to be put in which in this case we do because we want to change you know the aspect ratio in general so we're going to click on yes and as you can see it's automatically changed here so um next thing is obviously we, we actually want to do a couple more things uh obviously we want to rename this we're going to be doing the menu today, so obviously we'll call this one menu or main menu. Again, it doesn't really matter what the name is, but of course you get the general idea. And then we're going to click on this frame here, and this will give us the properties of the frame. And the last thing that we're going to do before we get into the next part of here, this is where we get to the really good stuff, is we want to change the background color. Um, the black or any other color pretty much blacks usually the recommendation and the reason why is because of the next part that we're gonna go into now uh, after you're done with all the settings in here uh, we also have some other things in here these are transitions which we'll talk about those when we get to them but right now we want to click on here and then click on this here on frame editor now this is pretty much where we're going to be adding in all the images and animations and all that stuff that'll show up in the game and uh if we actually zoom in we'll just click on view and zoom and just 50 percent um and this is the reason why i said you want to change the background color because if we didn't we just, we just kept it at white then it would have been Extremely hard would have been practically invisible to us if we didn't have it again any color would work other than white but black is usually the default here as That's usually just the easiest way to do it now now that we're in the actual frame editor um, Let's go ahead and add some objects now um, There's two ways to do this now you can first go into insert and click on new object, which you can do, but I that's not usually the recommendation. Or what I do is I right click in this on the screen, and the position doesn't matter. You can click outside or inside the actual frame, and it'll still pop up on insert object, and you'll get a wide selection of tools here. And this is the this is the biggest difference between the free and the full version, by the way. If you're using the free version, then I'd say you have you'd have about a third of these options available but if you got the full version you'd have way more options um, even though we'll, we won't be using most of these but we will be using um, a few at least so um, and I'll just say this outright um, we're gonna be 90% or even yeah 90% of this game is gonna be um, just entirely of active objects so if you click on this uh, and then we click on OK, and then your, our mouse will shift to this little, you know, arrow thing here. Uh, just wherever you click on it, it'll just place it wherever your mouse is. Again, it doesn't really matter unless you're trying to be precise, but you can always move it later, so it really doesn't matter much. Uh, then we're going to double click onto this active object. And this is pretty much where we'll, we start designing it. Now... What you're going to be doing most of the time is you're going to be getting a different image or a different sprite or whatever it is, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. So, if we click on here, and as you can already see, I already have this here. I actually already have all the game assets in this file with me. I have all of this different stuff. There are some images that are just kind of out of place. It's um, it's a little weird. Uh, but right now we're gonna go into main menu, and we're gonna select on this one right here. So 
there are um, a couple things that we can do here. Now, first of all, um, transparent and color. This is something that we want to make sure is correct. So basically, this is going to choose, um, it's pretty much going to choose any color that is not on here. And pink is, well, pink is an almost very absent color in the game anyways. So that's usually a good default for FNAF games in general. Uh, make sure you select that. And, well, I actually had this one here. This is an on animation. This is a still image. We're gonna do this like that. That will be important to us eventually. Not right now, but we simply have a still image, so we obviously don't want to import it as an animation. Um, everything else you can pretty much just leave deep by default. Um, I don't think hotspot and action point matter. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I would just say center for that because. You usually gonna be using center for especially these kind of images anyways after you're done with all that you're gonna click on ok and then yay we'll have our image up here so um, we're not done just yet though we still have a couple more things we want to do first off for this image right here there's something that we want to do which it doesn't affect the game per se but it does affect um, storage see click team has two different options and if we actually click on this thing right here called transparency then we can either have it as a transparent color or an alpha channel and you can see why we chose pink in here because if we chose if we chose like say black for instance and clicked on transparent color then all the black would go away now granted we are at a black background but it wouldn't exactly be in favor um, if we chose alpha channel, it wouldn't have any transparency at all, but it would um, cause more storage than we would need to. So what we're going to do is going to click on transparency color. It says it's going to up. It says this operation will erase the alpha channel. Do, do you want to continue? We're going to say yes, and you can do one of two things. You can either just leave it alone, which is perfectly fine, or uh, you may notice that your mouse has changed this little um, eyedropper tool. This will erase any color that um, resemble that um, has whatever color you press it on. So, for example, if I press on black, then you can see all that color is just gone. And again, this wouldn't really matter much anyway. So, I'm actually going to leave it like this just because it will waste less storage in general and then again if you didn't get that position right don't worry you can still move it and then we have this so um and of course if you're having a hard time trying to get directly in the middle you can you can go to your properties on the active object click on size and position and then uh, click on whatever you want to change. So in this case, uh, you can kind of see that it's a little up, so we want to change this. Uh, I say 360. That's usually um, how that works. Um, and that's, I mean, that's kind of it for that. But except if you recall correctly, in a Five Nights at Freddy's, you may remember that Freddy does a little twitch animation. So this is because we're gonna go ahead and add a few more of these in. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click um, just below all of this, click on new, and then this little power will appear and we're gonna make a new animation. Now obviously we don't want to name it animation 12 again, really lame. Let's name it instead to Twitch01. Again, you can do this, um, you know, you can name it differently depending on your game, or you can not have Twitch animations at all, obviously. So, uh, then we're going to be giving Freddy all of these Twitch animations right here, basically. And so, what we're going to do, and the good thing is that if you select all these settings here, then they'll remain the same afterwards. So, you don't have to keep like p doing the transparent color deselecting or selecting import as animation or any of that stuff you can just click okay 
and it'll it'll pretty much just do that. And again, just like with the first one, we want to go to transparent color and do this, which again will work. And then we right click again, and we're gonna add Freddy's other Twitch animations in here. And this is pretty much the same exact process, so you really do not need to do anything different here. Um, so we'll click on transparent color, click on that. Freddy will, you know, that'll get rid of the black. And then do the exact same thing for the last one, which of course, you know, is the, is the endoskeleton. And I hope I'm not going too fast for any of you, because um, I'm pretty sure it is not like it is. It it is a little bit repetitive. I will say that, but this is um, an important to kind of do to make sure that we get stuff right. So that's all the Twitch animations that we have. So we don't need to add anything else. We can just get out of this and do that and then we're actually obviously it's named active most of the time you wouldn't want to just leave it as active if you had like very few like objects it really would not matter but in something like the menu where we're gonna have multiple of these things and we probably want to sync th them all then we're gonna go ahead rename this and i'll just name it to freddy menu you can do whatever you want with the name you can I honestly don't care. So, um, that's the twitching. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and then we do have a couple more things that we can do. So, in this case, we can open up another active object. Click on there. Again, doesn't exactly matter. And we do have some more of our things here. Now, I'll be adding the title screen, and we'll be adding these two buttons. I know that's kind of a lot already, but it really gets very simple once you really start doing it a lot, trust me. And then, again, um, you notice that this has a gray background right now. We don't want that. We want it to be transparent. So we're going to click on transparency color, and then we're going to click on gray. And it'll get rid of that, which is good, because we don't want that around. Alright. And then, we have this. Uh, now, as a kid, I used to think that the menu was, like, more on the left here, but... Uh, no, it's not. It's... <laughs> it really is not. Uh, and then, of course, I'll rename this to Title. And again, I'm hoping I'm not going too fast for any of you. If, if you need to pause the video to keep up, then do not be afraid to do that. That is 100% okay. Um, and then again, just like with the title, we're going to add another active object. Um, you can also double click the active object and it'll just automatically get out of that box and allow you to do it immediately, if that can help too. Um, we're going to click on New Game. Um... Transparency, remove that. I'm gonna move that a little bit down there. We are gonna be adding like the stars and stuff. This is gonna be like a full on remake, I guess. I'll probably remove some stuff, like, I don't know. Alright, and then we'll do the exact same thing with the continue button. And then that'll be it for stuff that we're going to add, because after that, we'll get into some coding. Ooh, nice. Um, and then pretty much, yeah, just do the exact same thing here. Okay, uh, that's the menu. Um, uh, of course, I'll rename these real quick. Um, after I'm done doing that, we... We'll move on to do some coding. Mm hmm. All right. So, um, the last part of Click Team Fusion, and this is where the good stuff really happens, 
is this stuff called the event editor. This is where you make the objects actually do stuff. And it's good because then we'll actually have this menu act more like a menu instead of just an image like it kind of looks like right now. So, there are many things you can do and you can definitely experiment with this. But right now, we want to do some simple stuff like play the music and do stuff like that. Um, now, here's what I'm going to do. So to add a new event, we want to click on a new condition, and then this pop-up will appear. Now this is, this, is, this is a series of all the stuff that you can do, you know, like uh, some kind of special sound um, storyboard is kind of specific, like timers, um, objects, and then of course there's events that you can use with the objects itself. But right now, we're going to click on the storyboard. And we're going to click on start a frame. Now, let, as you can tell, this is something that's going to happen as we begin the, you know, once we actually begin the um, <clears throat> frame. So, um, pretty much what we're going to do is, well, we're first off going to play some sounds. Now, uh, what we'll do is we're going to right click on sound here, first of all, whoops, I'm going to click, right click on sound here, click on, uh, we'll hover, hover over sample, and then click on playing in loop sample. Now, there's three different kinds of things you could do. You can either play sample, play sample on a specific channel, or play in loop sample on a specific channel. Or you can play in loop sample, which, I mean, doesn't... I, I don't exactly use that last one, but right now we're going to click on a play in loop sample on a specific channel. And it's like, this first part is a little confusing, but just bear with me here. So, next we're going to click on browse. I'm going to get out of that one because that doesn't have any sounds. Then we're going to click on, then we're going to go over to the sounds. Um, there's going to be... Uh, again, you could, you'll find your sound somewhere else, but, like, um, if you guys do want to, like, truly do what I'm doing, then I'll leave a link to the actual, um, you know, files of the game that I have in the description. But right now, we're going to click on Main Menu Theme, and this will play the menu theme, as you can tell. And then, Uninterruptible basically means that sounds can't, like, go in and, like, uh, I don't know, like, interrupt it. Uh, I'm not really sure what that does, but I guess it's important. So, then we're going to click on Open, and then this will take us to this pop menu. Now, if you click, now if you simply clicked on um, Just Play Sample, this won't appear. You'll simply have that sound added, but since we clicked on Play in Loop Sample on a specific channel, then we have this extra pop-up to do. Now, pretty much, um, you'll have a certain number of channels where you can choose from one and I'm pretty sure you can do from a whole bunch of other stuff as well but we have no other channels right now so we'll click on one and then we have the loop so um, you can do other do this from either zero which is it goes on forever or 100,000 which at that point you might as well just do zero which is continuous which is, one, which is what we want to do, it's because it's the main menu. And then we're going to click on enter. And now, that is in there. And um, if you remember, um, there is actually the static that plays at the beginning. So we're going to go ahead, uh, right click on sound again, hover over samples. This time we're going to click on play sample on a specific channel. Okay, and... This time, I'm going to go back to Browse and click on Static, and this will play us the Static effect. And again, do an uninterruptible, you don't want it to actually interrupt. Um, and so the Static doesn't loop like the menu music does. Instead, it just plays once, then it goes away forever. Um, and since we already have our number one channel used, we want to go ahead and do a different channel. Which in this case we'll just do as two by default. And then uh, 
Oh, oh, and another thing too, if you want to run your frame, um, or run the frame, you, you want to click on this one right here, or click F7 as it says, but then if you also want to run the full game, uh, you can click on this here, so we'll go ahead and click on, and as you can see, we have our, we have our game right here, it has, uh, I actually can't tell if the video recorder is catching this. I sure God hope it is. If it's not, then I am very sorry. I'll probably try to get some kind of different video recorder. If it's not, um, but yeah, that does it pretty much. And then, um, yeah, and we actually want to do some other things as well on here while we're still at this. So, first things first, we want to make the Twitch animations play. Remember how I said that? Now, um, see how FNAF uses the Twitch animations, essentially every certain amount of time it will um, choose a random number and basically it has a few select numbers that it'll, pl that it'll choose and if it isn't equal to any of them then it'll just play Freddy's regular animation, but if it does choose a number occasionally that does equal a twitch animations number then um it'll play that instead so here's what we're gonna do so we're gonna click on new condition click on this timer here and then click on every so essentially it's a loop it'll do this event every certain amount of time however we want to do this very quickly and we'll actually do this for every Ze every seven milliseconds pretty much in or 0 0.07 if you want to be if you don't like the term milliseconds and I'll say that as well but I'll just say 0 0.07 because it's just easier for me so if you don't like it I apologize and then pretty much um, again it's gonna do this every seven seconds and so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna go over to Freddy menu of all things Right click on that and you'll have a whole bunch of stuff here as well that you can do. However, um, right now we'll want to click on, we'll hover on this thing called alterable value. Now, so here's the neat thing about Click Team Fusion. So it has two different kinds of um, value. So there's a counter, which uh, you can probably tell, it uh, counts, like it has a certain value that it holds and kind of changes, but then there's the objects and they have what's called an alterable value and basically what this is is it's kind of like an alternative counter where it has a value and then it keeps track of them and the neat thing about these is that there's multiple of them and so we're gonna hover over the alterable value and then click on set and so um, I'll actually give you guys a little showcase so you may have noticed that there are <laughs> It's called an alterable value A, and basically, an alterable uh, object can have 26 alterable values at a time, which is very helpful considering you can have a lot of counters and values. And, and pretty much each one is just labeled numerically. So, for the purpose of simplicity, we'll simply just go with alterable value A. And so, you're probably wondering, well, Matt, what's the point of all of this? Isn't you said before that it was going to be random, right? Well, here's a neat little thing about this thing. I'm sorry for that voice crack. Um, there's this um, thing called here that is random. If you click on this, then we'll have this come up. And pretty much, um, every 7 seconds, it'll have this, this value change from either a random of whatever number we're going to do. And in this case, we're going to do 100. And I guess I should feel like I should point something out real quick. If you do something like 100, it's not going to do a random 1 out of, to 100. Instead, it's actually going to pick a random of 0 to 99. However, if you, want, if you do want it to be random 1 to 100, then you can go ahead after this, click on plus, and then click on 1. So random 100 plus one. That pretty much just add. That pretty much just moves the actual random scale up one. So instead of every random zero to 99, it's gonna be every 
random 1 to 100, which is, you know, convenient. But we're not going to do that, because obviously we don't really need to. If we, there are certain circumstances where we would, we would want to do that. But, um, so yeah, set so alterable value 8 or random 100, that's great, we did it. But we don't have anything that actually makes it do anything when it's at there. So, this is the point where we click again on new condition. Uh, instead, we're going to click on the Freddy menu here. And then, as you can see, one of the options is alterable value. And we're going to compare it to one of the alterable values, which, again, if you just remember, we just set 1, 2. And so, what we're going to do here is we're going to ask ourselves, um, we're basically going to set three of these Twitch animations to a number. And usually, you want to do it as the highest number as possible. So, since I just said that the random goes from uh, random 0 to 99 we want to have one of the we want to have the three animations as 99 98 97 and then the rest of those numbers that aren't there will just play the regular animation so here's what we're going to do um alternable value 8 that's already set um we want to set this number to 99 cuz that's the max number that's one of the tippy tops and that's equal so you can either do equal different lower or equal or lower or greater or equal or greater and that's kind of confusing to say but um it's very easy to understand once you actually use it uh we're gonna click on okay um we have this and then um after this all we do is just change the animation uh so if we go here if you right click on freddy menu again hover over animation and instead of saying stop or start, we're instead going to go to change, and then change animation sequence. And this will change, then, then we'll have all of our different animations that we made. So we have stop, just normal, twitch 1, 2, and 3. Now, I want to do twitch 3. You can do either twitch 1 or 2, which, whatever works better for you, but I'll just do twitch 3 for now. And then, a neat thing about click confusion is that you don't have to just copy... You don't just have to do the same thing over again. Like, okay, I have to go back to new condition, click on Freddy menu again, hover over alterable value. You don't have to do any of that. Instead, what you can do is click on this on the row here, high, that'll highlight this. Then we'll click on Control C, and then if we click on this four here, which is the one that's below it, then we're gonna click on Control B. And now to make an exact copy, it copies the same um, event things, and it even copies the same um, reactors. So, this time, instead of saying 99, we instead just want to change this to 98. Because then, that's a different number. We want to make sure we have different numbers for each of these. Because now, we're going to change this to a different animation, since that's already the one that we did. Instead, we want to change this to Twitch02. And then finally, we can do that again. It's really, I hope that's not too confusing for you all. Click on this, click on 97, and then change this to the final Twitch animation. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'll just call this FNAF Tutorial. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, save your work often. Do not, uh, do not leave your work unsaved. I mean, Clickton doesn't have any issues with crashing, that's what I know of, but definitely make sure that you're saving often. You do not want stuff like that to happen. Okay, and then finally, uh, and also another thing, neat thing you can do as well, is you can, uh, you see this little dot here? It's not actually a dot, it's an arrow, but I call it a dot. It looks like it from a very wide thing well if you click and hold this and then drag this to the number below what it is then you'll then you'll just copy it down here and you don't but well, you won't copy the actual event things here this is usually used if you want a different event um reaction to happen but we're not really i just thought i could show that i could show that uh you can do the same exact thing with these as well you can simply click on them drag it and then click it to onto it into a new space you can even move it to different to different of these there are some limitations though like if 
these don't have any options with it, I obviously cannot be dragged onto it. But finally, uh, first things we're going to click on here. Um, we're going to click on choose comparison method, and this time we're going to say lower. So any number that is lower than 97 in this situation, so we're going to click again on the event reaction, click on edit, almost click on delete there, but you know, and click on stop because that's the normal event animation. And now we're going to hit play. And, and there it is. If you guys see it, sometimes it'll take a little bit, but if you know it, barely see that Twitch animation play. Now, obviously, we still have some stuff missing, like, uh, we can't click, we can't, you know, go to any of the distances, we don't have the arrows, we don't have the static, um, but I think this is a good time to stop. I know that was kind of a lot, but I won't be explaining as much this time as I will be in the next episode. I feel like that would just be repetitive and be very, very boring, which hopefully I haven't been boring you guys too much. And again, if you need help on anything, make sure to go back into the video and see exactly what you missed. Now, alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helped you all. Uh, I'll be back soon with another video. We'll hopefully be finishing up the menu and then moving on to some other neat stuff like the newspaper and night transitions and stuff like that. And of course, I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.